Hey, <laughs> what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. It's a beautiful day. No fun, crazy intro, just more dog being dog. By beautiful day, I mean absolutely gorgeous. Little chilly. Head on a hoodie for a while, it's only like 80 degrees. Almost 20 degrees cooler than it was yesterday, but that's okay, I will take it. Can get more done when it's cooler out. I'm gonna have the camera overheating every five minutes. That will be nice. I need to handle just this. These are my leftovers. They're not leftovers, but the annuals that I have left that I need to get planted. Some of them are meant to go underneath the mule palms, which I haven't repotted yet. And then uh, some of the others are supposed to be used at somebody else's house. I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. This spot is what I would call my main priority this week, just to get the clutter out, get the pots arranged, <laughs> fix the drip that's just dangling over here. Looking like a mess. Need to fix that. What's going on with this banana? Looks like garbage. I don't know what that's about. The drip's been running on that container just fine. It's put up lots of little babies. And the other trunk is still in here, but it's like only one of them has decided to take off and be a grown-up. Doesn't look as nice as I had hoped it would, but that's okay. I can always cut out those little ones some other time. That's not, I'm not worried about that right now. I guess the place to start here would be to figure out what I want to keep here and what needs to be moved and there are a few things left that i should probably plant oh and i should repot this the soils here this is small enough i can repot this my talk about my back last week the back muscles feeling much better for the most part but there's still like a little something going on it's only been two days since that video came out so i'm still trying to be careful but i can like little things you know as long as it weigh more than like 30 pounds seems to be fine toby went for a swim of course he did just gave him a bath this is the variegated Sea hibiscus. Got this about a year ago, a little over a year ago. It's done a pretty good amount of growing. I would say the trunk is starting to thicken out on it. I think I can cut off those lower ones down there and don't see why I hold on to those. Go ahead and allow some taller growth on this plant. I think that this is the only pot I have that that's really going to work in. Yeah. It'll work. It's not the most attractive thing, but it'll do. This plant has been really solid. Oh, is that big enough? I mean, I know when we talk about bumping plants up, we always say to go one to two inches on the outside diameter, which would make this perfect. However, these plants really like to grow and it is going to root into that pot and be so thirsty if I don't move it. I don't know if I have anything bigger than this though. Nope, that'll have to do. You can't even see. This is stick in the way. Doesn't matter. It is growing at a slight angle, so I'm going to try and correct that as I pot it up. The thing is, even if it does, which it, it will, it's going to root into this pot very quickly. This plant has been shockingly drought tolerant. The drip has been off of this one for like, I don't know, three weeks because I had to reroute the drip head that went to this to a different plant. It hasn't skipped a beat. It has been totally fine. And we've had temperatures in the triple digits and there have been days where I forgot the drip wasn't even on over there and it didn't get watered as it should. Never wilted down. And in the winter, this thing was a trooper too. I think I only saw this get thirsty like, oh, maybe one time, maybe twice it got wilty and it just, I gave it a drink and it would pop right back up. And of all the different types of hibiscus I've grown, this one has been by far the easiest and uh, <laughs> least fussy. I know that probably looks like a lot of slow release. I use a lot of slow release. It'll be fine, don't worry. Earthworm castings. As I was saying, hurry, fighter jets went flying over the house. Uh, earthworm castings. I don't mix those in by hand. They tend to stain the fingers. Where are my snippers? Go cut off these lower limbs. And that opened this up nicely. It has more of a tree form now. Did a good amount of growing. I did have to do some pruning on this when I brought it outside for the springtime because it had gotten really tall. It was probably another foot and a half taller than this and it was leaning quite a bit. So I cut it and, you know, get the stuff thickened out down below and encourage more branching and all that stuff. I could probably give this another prune all the way around just to help get the stuff to come out. I don't know if I will. I'm gonna think about that. And the pot's not as pretty. My god. Turbo. That is... Whew. Nothing that smell should come out of anything. I like the Talavera pot a lot more, obviously. It's a very pretty pot, this beautiful pot down here, but this is fine too. I don't really care. 
not gonna be too picky about that. Think I might pop some petunias in here. I need to count these annuals. That's the next thing I should probably do because I know I'm gonna to wanna to underplant things and I have to remember what is for what. I do an inventory real quick. Okay, yes, hello Turbo. Uh, okay, I have plenty of things to put underneath here, but not everything needs to be underplanted. I need to save most of what's there to plant under the mule palms for whenever I can get around to doing that. So I guess I'm just going to rearrange some things and try and be careful not to do anything stupid, which is going to be difficult because I really want to do all of the things I'm not supposed to be doing. Let me see, look at isn't that a gorgeous pot with the fish? Love it. I'm not going to replant this right now. I always want to make sure something that I really like, something special needs to go in these pots. Move that sad begonia out of here. That needs to go someplace with a little bit more shade. Thought it was happy there. I don't actually think it was. Pretty sure I was wrong about that. What I would like to have happen here is to get this hibiscus over here into this corner because it would create a little bit of a shield. I need something to kind of block this area off. It's not the most attractive thing to look at. I need to find a new spot to put the perennials that are supposed to go in my sister's garden. There we go. I, you know, I feel like this is probably really boring. We'll just cut back to when I've done something over here and maybe we'll talk about it. Maybe I'll decide to pot something up. I have no idea. There's no plan for this week. I'm just trying to get stuff done. You know, sometimes I pick up the camera for these weekend vlogs. I'm like, oh, this is what I'll work on. It'd be easy. And then I just, just make a mess out of the whole thing. <laughs> what happened? I uh, had a plan and I was executing that plan. I thought very well. And then uh, I, that everything just fell apart. <laughs> no, get out. Go on. Turbo out. Out. Yeah, you know better. There's a toad over there. I don't want to harass the toad. Pick up one plant and you go, oh, I'm going to do this with that. You pick up another plant and go, oh, I was saving this for that project. And now I just, <sighs> all this. There's a lot. My general philosophy when there's a big mess of clutter, something like this going on, and you don't know where to start, I usually say the best thing to do is just pick something up and do whatever it is you're supposed to do with that thing that's in your hand. Don't focus on the big picture. You just keep doing that until you've whittled away as far as possible. But some of these things aren't things that I can just do something with, you know, like if something needs a repot, well, that's that's a whole thing. Or something saved for a different project, then that's that's a whole nother thing. A pro like I'm not just going to tackle 10 different projects right now while I'm trying to do this. Because a lot of the plants that were over here, a little background, are things that I buy and I save for videos later on or for something I had planned out for someone else, that sort of thing. And that's why I was moving some of the perennials. Cause like, okay, well, if they're not for my yard, I need to go put those into like a little storage space. It's not necessarily right here on the patio. And that makes perfect sense with the annuals. That's not necessarily the case. They need to get potted up with this sea hibiscus right here. I had debated planting it up, planting under it, under planting it with some annuals or something like that. But then I decided that I would rather whatever nutrients are in that pot be available for this plant. It's not just, I mean, it's a tree. So it needs everything it can get and annuals really suck all the nutrient or the elements, I should say the minerals out of the soil. So I'm not going to do that. And instead I, I just decided, well, I'll just pick up the camera and maybe if I just talk for a while, I'll figure something out here. My brain will stop spinning. Uh, so far, not really helping. Still don't know where to start. Okay, well, big picture, what I would like for this spot is one for it to be tidy. That's important. I have a couple of hibiscus trees that I think would do well over here. There's not necessarily space for more trees. I know this doesn't even seem like it's in place here. It's really not, but it provides a little bit of a screen because there's a gap right here that looks like right into the neighbor's dining area. And it just sometimes it's kind of awkward at nighttime when we can see each other. So that's really the only reason that's there and that's another reason I kept it in a lightweight pot so I can move it in and out if necessary like if it gets big enough which it probably will when it starts to go over the steps and make it hard to get into that hot tub there but otherwise I'm I'm fine with that being right there it's not like I'm trying to save the beautiful view of the hot tub lid right that's not a thing totally fine with hiding that it doesn't matter hey Turbs he's getting antsy we haven't had our swim yet he's gotten to a point where he's kind of like me if we don't get in there and get a workout you start to get kind of grumpy don't you turbo i have the two roses here that are doing pretty well this is a 
I didn't have to talk about that right now. Here's that little hibiscus that I've had for a few years. Give this a big cut back in the winter time and it's done some growing. I don't think it's a variety that even gets very big. I don't really know why I've held on to it. It has a nice orange flower on it, but it's not like mind blowing. It's nothing special. It really is just taking up space for what was just like a $3 annual, but I've had it this long and I feel like I shouldn't get rid of it. All right, I do have empty plants and plants need to be potted, but that's, nope, still getting ahead of myself. Got to clear out the wall, figure out where I want the big plants and work my way forward. And then whatever's left is left over and figure something else out, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I'm going to move that rose, but when it's in flower, it actually looks pretty cool there. It has a, this is the hot paprika. Okay, we'll talk about it. The hot paprika, oh so easy. I think it's a landscape rose. They have smaller, almost like miniature sized flowers on them. Chances are by the time the garden tour comes out, we'll be able to get to see the flowers that has some buds on it, but they're a really intense, kind of corally orange color. Paprika, is that, what color is paprika? I don't think it's the color of those flowers. That would be odd. Something I would definitely remember. My favorite hibiscus is in bloom. This does need to be repotted. It's still in its nursery can. Looking pretty scraggly, so I'm going to pick out an appropriate size container over here for this one and pot it up and situate it somewhere over here along this wall. Another abrupt change. This one, Toby. You stink. I don't understand. I just gave him a bath, the outdoor shower. Really useful for the dogs, but whoa. Especially Toby. He's easy to bathe. He just like sits there. You turn it on. I say, come over, sit. He sits. Real easy to do. Sometimes after you bathe this one, he goes and finds something stinky to roll around in. And by sometimes, I mean pretty much always. That's that's on me. I should have taken him inside. Okay, so here's, <laughs> here's where we are. I spent way too much time. Let me move this out of the way way too much time trying to decide if I wanted to repot the freckles croton. It's my favorite croton. Look at it. Looking nice. Could look better though. It needs a repot. I was going to put it in this blue pot right here that this banana tree is in, but I had the banana tree sitting there and I was like, no, that's, that's where that's got to go. I don't know why. It's just that's where it needed to be. I can put freckles in a black nursery can. That's not a big deal. The alocasia, I just kind of tossed over here because I was like, maybe, but no. I, for one, I don't think it would like it here. It's a bit sunny for this one. The variegation on it fries that sits in the sun. And I really, I'm not a fan of that pot mixed in with everything over here. That's going to get moved. And then over here, like this side, bugging me. I, for a while, I was like, I don't really know why, but then I looked at it, and I was like, it's too many small leaves. That's what it is. With the hamelia right there and the rose behind it, it just looks sort of weedy. Have, like, nice, bold foliage on this side foliage. You know what I mean. Over here, more fine textures. I don't really know what to do about that. I don't want to move the roses. I like having the rose on each side of the steps. More of a fall and winter thing and early spring, where there's nothing else out here. Like, they, they look nice. They stay semi-evergreen. They're just good to have out here. I guess I could move the rose that's on that side of the steps, perhaps. But I don't really have a plan for what I would put in its place. I have some gingers that... No, I don't want to put those there. Anyway, so I brought over the Dracaena Reflexa. I had it sitting on the other side of the patio where there's too much shade for it anyways. And I thought, well, maybe that could go there. But the thing is, it's put on a good amount of growth. And it's just going to block everything in that spot. So, okay, I still need to bring it over here because that actually... it. it was over here last year and did wonderfully so it needed to come to this end of the patio anyways so and that's and then it did have some thirsty plants too things are high maintenance out here today the air's been surprisingly dry which i'm not i'm not mad about but I'm not really used to that kind of thing so it's not that hot it's only like 91 but the <laughs> i mean that happened Gave them water, not enough. Their annuals are in little cans, so I will have to probably drop those in a bucket or throw them in the trash. We will see. It's not much, but progress has been made. I'm gonna get back to it and just keep playing around with things and maybe, hopefully, here in just a moment, this will be done for you. It's not gonna take me a moment. It's gonna take a long time. And then I have some perennials I want to pop into the ground. I think that's even more important than this. It's just, I started this, so I'd like to finish it. And, you know, just, you know, more vloggy stuff. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot the pineapple. I wanted to get that potted up into this container here. And by potted up, I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna stick it down in there. This should be very quick and easy. I want it to stick up just a smidge. Yeah, 
that'll do it. And then in the front, where'd it go? There it is. Super Tunia Vista Indigo. This is it stays smaller, still pretty uh, bold plant from what I've been told by y'all. This is the first time I've grown this one, but it is, I mean, still smaller in comparison to like the bubble gum. I'm just gonna squeeze that down in there and backfill it and those purple flowers can grow over the front. The reason I'm leaving the pineapple in this container is because it's going to want things more dry than the petunia. Well, this is probably going to need considerably more water. In the past, I have paired these up with the pineapples, that is, I've paired them up with Calabrax, Calabracoa. Worked well, they were a good pairing because they, neither one of them really like to have sopping wet feet. Uh, the petunia doesn't, it's not gonna need sopping wet feet, nothing like that, but I have this and this is what I intended on doing with it because I like the smaller size and the fullness that I would get from it. And that and Calabrax sometimes don't do amazing for me until we start to have cooler temperatures. I think that's more of a pavement issue, like they end up getting cooked if they're too close to the ground. Because in hanging baskets, I don't normally have that problem unless I have them paired up with a bunch of things that need a lot of water. Okay, backfill that and figure out what I want to do right here. Hmm. What do we think, Turbo, will you lie down? Good boy, <laughs> you're blocking things. Okay, or just come, why don't you come up? Turbo, there are plants behind the dogs. This is a good spot. I feel comfortable with this. Not loving it, but comfortable. A drastic improvement, that's what I should say. Is I have some more plants I wanted to put over here, but I'm holding back on them because there's a whole like sale going on at all the nurseries, like, literally almost all of the nurseries. <laughs> that was my phone. My bad. 50% like off all over the place. And I have those two big plots that I want to plant up. Right now, I like this. There will probably be some plants moving in and out, rotating through this area throughout the summertime. I <laughs> thought this pot would fit in there. Did not. It's okay, no big deal. I don't actually think I want to keep this black coral elephant here right here in this spot anyways, just because I don't think it's going to be quite enough sun to keep that one looking nice and luscious and then i did pull the rose which rose was that oh so easy italian ice rose that was down there i just i didn't i don't know i wasn't feeling it oh yeah we already talked about it i didn't like it there's just too much going on there and the oh so easy italian ice i thought i really liked and then i planted them last year and i was like Meh. i don't know I'm not crazy about it so that's going into a different plastic pot that i can just drop into this blue pot those are called bubble planters the ones with the like these right here, there's that orange one here and the blue one there. And I dropped the Akuba in its place so that I could get some more big bold foliage over here on that side. I mean, it's just, I like it. Good amount of color, nice textures. When things fill out and start flowering, I will like it even more. Oh, on the foot, I wasn't sure how much I was going to like the purple in here. But I was committed because like I said, I already had it and that's what I've been planning on doing with it. And I, I like it, it's a nice cool tone. I think it goes fine with the oranges and the other colors that are over here. And it was easy and quick. It's a Super Tunia Vista, so I'm not really probably going to have to do much with it. That's what I like the most. Just a starting point. All the annuals have been moved to a spot where there's less light and they're in direct contact with some of the sprayers from the drip. So there will be less maintenance and I attempted to blow the area off. As soon as I came out with the blower turbo came running over from the pool and just soaked the ground. Yeah, things don't just blow away when they're sopping wet, but it's, it's okay. Got a lot of it up. It's supposed to be raining all next week anyways, or I guess that'll be the week prior to this video coming out. It's supposed to get a lot of rain. That could change, I don't know. Doesn't matter, I'm happy with this. I'm ready to move on from it. I guess I didn't talk that much about what I've done here, did I? It's just kind of been cutting back and forth. Y'all know what's going on over there. It's a Hamelia Patton's right here. I want to make sure there was some orange on each side because I like the way the orange goes with the pinks. So I have nice orange flowers that the hummingbirds were like. I also like the way purple goes with orange. The hibiscus standards are just sort of chilling there because I just repotted them and I didn't want them in direct light. So that's where they're sitting for right now. I might keep one of them there. We'll see how they do. The variegated tree hibiscus, y'all already know about that. I think that's how the video started off. I did underplant it with an Estralita little star which is a type of bovardia one little shrub should just kind of fill in the spot and have those the flowers here's the let's see the picture of the flowers pretty flowers not much to look at just yet oh and i had a just one bulb of an ooh, caladium frog in a blender that popped up underneath my robolini palm from last year and i went ahead and put that 
over here just because, you know, why not? Paprika, oh so easy rose. Y'all know about that. The banana, that had its own video. Mr. Freckles, Freckles Croton, ready for a repot, but still looking nice. And then I popped a ginger in the front, some more purple on this side. And this is that green mountain ginger. It's done a good amount of growing. This is what's left of the main flower on there. The flowers on these things last a long time. That should keep going for a couple more weeks. And then all these, I bet, will be blooming by the time that one fades out, which is very nice. And the leaves are supposed to look like that. That's what those are supposed to look like. Fun, kind of spirally, swirly stems on it. Neat plant. And then the black coral elephant ear, which like I said, I do like it over here, but I don't think it's going to be totally happy with the amount of sun it gets. So that was just, I tried, put something else there. And that's gonna do it for today. It was a nice day. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get some perennials in the ground and I don't know, we'll see what else needs to be done. That might be it, I don't know. I feel like there was something else I was supposed to do, but I don't remember. Look what, no, can't, can't look at anything. Come on now, get it together. Look what finally came in the mail. This, you don't, okay background. When I planted up this container back here, right above my finger, with the adenidia palm in it, I'd mentioned there's like a gap I didn't plant up because I was waiting for some heliconias to come in the mail. And here are those heliconias. They spent a while in the mail. They're from Ye Brahms on Etsy. Always had great luck with them. I don't think the time they spent in the mail is their fault at all, or probably <laughs> neither is the fact that the package is totally like crumbled on one side, right where it says fragile. Irony, gotta love it. Pop this open, see how it looks. I know I said perennials and those sorts of things. We'll get to that, but this needs to be handled first. It's been in the mail for a while. I, uh, my box cutter here, get this popped open. <laughs> did that make anyone nervous? I bet it did. I have a tripod sitting right next to me for this reason, so I don't have to have a blade in my hand while I'm holding the camera. I wasn't even hooked up to it. And these were shipped during a very intense heat spell, so uh, yeah, I don't know. My hopes aren't that high, although I see green in there. That's a good start. Still some moisture in that one. I think it's okay. This entire package smells, like, uh, I don't, what is it? Um, lemons? Plumeria, maybe? I'm not sure. Very fragrant, like nauseatingly fragrant. Bit much for me. All right, the name's right there. Adrian. Fold out the address. Dwarf Heliconia Golden Torch Adrian. It's a parrot's beak, live rhizome. It's a shorter Heliconia, I think two to three feet tall, and the flowers on these are supposed to be more like stout and chunky. I don't really know how to describe it. Plenty of plastic wrap here. Jeez. I think just a couple passes around that rhizome probably would have held in the moisture, but whatever. Some variety I'm not familiar with growing. Hey, it's a rhizome chunk, looks good though. Has a couple of eyes on it, even some root nubs that are about ready to pop out there. Can we see what's happening? I can't see my viewfinder. Are we in focus? I hope so. I'm not going to have the patience to remove that plastic wrap again. So come in and cut it out with the knife because that other one took forever. All right, there's the other one. Looks pretty good. Couple eyes, really just one, maybe another one developing there, but they're nice and Thick. Both of these are good girthy plants to work with. They should establish relatively quickly. A vigorous plant, prolific year-round bloomer, two to three feet tall, can grow in part shade to full sun, bracts or golden yellow, red towards the tips. That's a much better description than I was able to give. Uh, right now, not much to look at. I am not the biggest fan of starting heliconias from the rhizomes this time of year. That's something I normally prefer to do much earlier just because it takes them a while to get established and then start flowering, but beggars can't be choosers. It's not a plant that's sold around here very often. I mean, I found them last year at, at Lowe's and then bought all of them from three different stores. That's something I see happening again. You get these planted. I'm actually tempted to maybe put these in some water for like an hour or so to give them a good soak because they were in the package for such a long time. I think that's a good idea. I'm gonna do that. Okay, water and hell these aren't gonna fit in there are they nope well it was a nice try no big deal just add some more water top that off give those a while to soak i know aesthetically i probably should have brought out something clear but it's like i mean i just put the thing does anybody care if they're just sitting in water those have some more time to rehydrate down here i have some delphinium and some other plants are wait, waiting to get planted the del just a heads up the delphiniums they're not looking too hot you remember triple digit temperatures for a while 
on the pavement. I stuck them in the shade, but still, so we can just go down there. You're gonna see, they're, they're looking sad. They're ready to get into the ground. I'm going to have to be somewhat careful down here. There's a booming population of mud dabber wasps that have taken over my yard. They're all over the place down here and over here, and I'm planting right here. So this will be fun. Actually, it should be pretty fast. I pre-dug the holes. Here's the delphiniums. They don't look great. I'm gonna come in, cut off the old spent blooms, get them into the ground. I think that that's going to really do a lot for them. Just getting them into the ground, make a huge difference. These are the Shelby delphiniums. That's hardly even visible. From what I've read about this particular delphinium, it's supposed to be a little bit more sturdy and resilient. Delphinium delginius. Nice name. I should get in here and clean out a bunch of that junk while I can. I should have brought my clippers over because I need to clean up the spent flower heads that are up there. The Shelby delphinium, I haven't personally grown it, but from what I've read about it, and the reason I liked it was one, because it has beautiful, beautiful flowers. Yeah, they need to get into the ground. These have already been watered and they're still really sad and droopy. They have a more thick flower head on them. It's a little bit more stout and they're supposed to be really good rebloomers. And it's seeming like they are, from what I can tell, these have been going pretty strong now for a while. These are being planted on a slope, so it's going to look like part of the root ball is exposed, and that's just because I'm going to have to come in and get gravel up here on this part, and that's the roots will train themselves to go back into that slope. And they're supposed to make nice cut flowers as well. Sorry about the lighting. I chose to wait until the afternoon sun was over here so that it would be easier to see what was going on, but I'm not sure if that was really the case or not. I think that it might just be really hard to see what's going on over here. I need to come in here, prune off this old stuff, let the plant devote its energy to new blooms. Even these right here, the ones that are wilted down, I'm just gonna cut those off. I'll leave that spike since it has some stuff on it that hasn't opened up yet, but I prefer to get the old spent blooms out and try and get that dead stuff out of the middle too. That was quick and easy. Three Shelby delphiniums. There's two right here, there's one more on the front of this little, whatever you would call this right there, pardon the shovel, it fell down. I also dropped a firelight tid, is that what you are? I always get these confused. Yeah, firelight tidbit panicle hydrangea right there. Those get two to three feet tall. So that'll be in the background of the delphinium right there. The pineapple lilies, just, I mean, that's just kind of there. Something I dropped there. The delphiniums, for me, I don't always have the best of luck with them. Most of the time when I try them, they tend to rot out when the heat of summer kicks in and things get really moist outside. But I haven't tried them in this spot. This spot gets a really, really good amount of morning sun. And then as you can see, filtered light in the afternoon. They might do better here. And I thought maybe since there's a slope here, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a pretty hard angle, big change in, the grade there so the water should drain through more quickly and the soil over here is very 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 sandy and organically rich the water does move through it fairly quickly yeah we'll see how they do this is kind of an experiment just figured why not give them a shot right here i uh, don't know about the blue dune grass with the blue flowers behind them i think those are going to somewhat kind of fade together but well, we'll see Either way, I'll be happy that they're there because they'll make nice cut flowers. <laughs> Not that I ever cut flowers or do arrangements, but it's nice to have the option. I'm giving things a second water here with the sprinkler just because, you know, a little bit dry. I think I need to reset my drip. I'm running every six hours right now, and I'm thinking maybe every four hours while the air is more dry might be a good idea. That's really neither here nor there. The only reason I brought those is because I need to get over there to plant those heliconias. But just wait, give like 15 minutes and get that done. Well, now I'm just bored, but the reminder just went off on my phone that I need to that I need to reapply my sun. Is this that I put on too much? It'll rub it, I swear, it'll rub it. I had it sitting on the table so it warmed up and a bit much came out of the tube. I mean, that, that should do the trick. I don't think I have to worry about any sun damage with that going on, jeez. Great sunscreen, by the way, highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah, I do try and talk about sunscreens when I like them, you know, gardening, nature, all that stuff, outdoor activity. I really like this one. Dr. Maxfield on Doctorly recommended it. I usually trust his judgment because his whole thing is that it doesn't feel sticky. 
It doesn't make you look oily and they stay water resistant, which is really important with the swimming and being outdoors and the sweat and everything. This has been good. I like it a lot. I was using the UV Sport, which I still use on my face, but it comes off in the pool, even though it's water resistant. So that kind of defeats the purpose. They have to put on a lot of it. This stuff right here does not come off. I mean, as you just saw, leaves a white cast. This isn't one you really want to wear if you're trying to look pretty, but if you're just outside trying to not get any kind of sun damage, it's a good one. I don't usually use that much. Like I said, it was just because it got really liquidy in the bottle and I didn't realize it. But I mean, I usually still have a white cast when I put it on though, which is fine with me. I don't mind that. And really like within probably 20 minutes, a lot of that's going to fade away. Like I said though, I'm out here doing yard work, exercising, not trying to look pretty, just want the UV protection. Water resistance is a big thing for me because of the swimming. This has been a good one, but it's so water resistant that it's actually kind of hard to get off of the skin like you really you got to scrub pretty hard sometimes to get it off i tried using micellar water which helped i didn't even know what that was until i had to google how to get sunscreen off of your skin it did make it a little bit easier has it been an hour yet i'm so ready to move on and plant those heliconias i'm gonna find something else to do i'm getting really antsy hope you enjoyed that brief break for sunscreen i'm always i love sunscreen oh and it does have fragrance in it which i'm not a fan of but once i've been wearing this when i've been in the pool it's not noticeable I don't understand why do we need to put fragrance in sunscreen it seems so unnecessary or anything that might be near the face why it doesn't really make sense to me I thought of something i need to work on another thing sun protection just a big hat works just fine I'm not out here trying to win any beauty contests so over here it's a bit of a mess i'm not going to do anything too drastic here right now but i would like to get this pot out of here which I know, i'm saying i'm trying not to lift heavy things but it's got to go. It's bugging me. I have something else I want to plant there in the middle. Also, if the audio's kind of weird right now, it's because my voice is reflecting off the top of my giant derpy hat. Which <laughs> I think you can see the hat in the shadow here. This pot, oh, whoa, that is piping hot. <laughs> Might have to put on some gloves if I'm going to be touching that thing. Beautiful pot. It needs to be emptied and recast. I don't think cast is the right word has a big crack in the side, needs to be uh, cemented. Take some cement and very lightly put layers on there over and over and over until you've built up a new side and that'll help hold it together. This isn't one that I would probably use the Gorilla Glue on. That's really neither here nor there. Right now, I just want to get it out of here, at least out of right there. I have something I want to plant right here, right where that pot is. I think I'm, I'm just going to like, I'm just going to try and scoot it out of the way. Okay, this, it's not that heavy, but still, I'll just slide it just to be safe, just to get it moved. Pick that up in a day or two and put it somewhere else. Finding treasures in there, Turbo? Stay out. Yeah, right there where all that mud is. It's a good spot for a plant that I have sitting around that I think would enjoy those nice, moist conditions. Also, that exposed a drip line that I've been trying to find. See that black line right there? It's worked out well. The shadows right now are really bad, so I went ahead and spared all the excitement. I just went ahead and dug the hole off camera. So for this spot, I have this lovely sad-looking Colocasia here. This is a Colocasia Pharaoh's mask. It's a really unique, kind of weird, alien-like looking one from Brian's Botanicals. You can find them other places as well, but he's the creator and the owner of this plat plant. <laughs> plant patent. It's a pretty sturdy, vigorous plant as long as things don't dry out much. There's going to be a lot of shadows here. Sorry, can't do anything about it. Doing my best to avoid casting too many shadows over here. Also, I need to be quick. This is where all those mud dauber wasps are. They have this listed as potentially being hardy in zone seven. I think maybe they even said zone six with proper protection. And this corner over here is a very warm corner. The gingers and bananas, cannas, anything I put over here usually does fairly well. So I thought this might be a good spot for this one. I'm gonna have to build that soil up a smidge higher. Don't wanna overbury it. Need to make sure that's at the right level. I put a good amount of compost in here too. Pharaoh's masks like things, very nutrient dense and moist. Compost is going to help keep things nice and rich. It'll help hold on to some moisture. I'm going to pull in so mulch here. I do have this planted somewhat in a divot, which is kind of a risky thing to do when we're talking about cold hardiness. You usually want to lift something a smidge higher it's because cold air settles in lower spots. But like I said, this whole entire area over here is pretty warm. I think that it should be okay here. And if not, then we learned. Fun looking plant. Not much to it just yet. Especially when I come back here. Wow, look at how neat. Turbo, you're in the way. Come on. You're not supposed to be in there. What are you doing? Get out. He knows when I talk to the camera, he can get away with things. So I just have to imagine this being 
taller and more full with all that big foliage around it in the back. Camera overheated. Anyways, I came back over here, put the camera by the fan, and to grab these Sun Impatience. The Tropical Rose, no, not Tropical Rose, Compact Deep Rose. One of my favorites. I have three of them here, but uh, well, you can't, those can't go in the ground right now. I told y'all, the sun is really strong today. These have been watered twice. They got watered twice this morning. I'm gonna go throw them in a bucket. I'm not used to this no humidity life. I just looked at the sensor I had back here, only at 43%. Bone dry. The idea here with those impatients was to have them in like a triangle. One right here, one behind there, and one over here in this corner. And then I was going to lead the gravel up, which will look better when that pot's not there, up into this area and have that gravel lead up into a circle around that pharaoh's mask, kind of like a faux pond or creek bed sort of thing. It should end up looking nice. There's a drip head, that red dot. I went ahead and put that there to make sure that it's always getting watered and none of the sprinklers ever miss it. And that soil that's here does drain well. I did add the compost, as I mentioned, to help hold in some moisture, but the soil around this area does still let water pass through, which is really important for winter survival. And since this one isn't listed as being hardy in zone six, this is a gamble, but it's one I'm willing to take. I wanna see what's going to happen with this plant. Hopefully in a couple months, a few weeks, this should be, I would say triple that height with larger leaves. It'll have a nice circular mound in there. It's a prolific plant. It will offset and grow all over the place as long as it gets the moisture that it wants. And I think that it will, but we will find out. It is currently surrounded by plants that like a lot of moisture. I make sure the spot stays very well irrigated. The gingers, they don't like to dry out. The cannas don't. The crepe, the crepe myrtles can be drought tolerant, but they're just kind of here. I'm not really attached to those. They actually might be going fairly soon because Japanese beetles are starting to show up and those always draw them in. So that's not a plant I'm attached to enough to keep it around. I might take those out. And the sable miners as well. The dwarf scrub palms, they, they can grow in swampy conditions. Things aren't swampy over here. I think you get the point. The soil drains well, but still holds on to some moisture, and I think this will be a good spot. And then at some other point when those sun impatience have rehydrated, I'm going to come in here. And also when the sun's out of this corner, this spot over here, really hot. Like, really, really, really hot, which is why things survive the winter so well. I love that about this spot, but not the most pleasant place to be in the middle of the afternoon when the sun's over here. I want to get these lava stones, which you can see some of down here. There's one right there, one right there. There's some more that are tucked away over here. I'd like to get those rearranged and kind of leveled out more into the ground so that they look more natural. Right now, they're just kind of sitting there like chunks. So I need to fix that. Uh, I will do that another time when the sun's not in that corner. All right, it's been like an hour and a half. That should be enough time for these rhizomes to have pulled in some moisture and to gotten some plumpiness going on them plumping you know what i mean that's not really a word i'm going to put them right next to each other which probably shouldn't necessarily do and that's just a thing of impatience really i don't want to wait all summer to get much growth out of these and with heliconias when they feel the confinement around the roots you tend to get faster growth out of them or flowering i should say they'll start to push their growth up faster so i have the one right there with the lead that's running out of it heading this way same thing with this one i'm going to put it so that it will hopefully curve around and touch the side of the pot and maybe just trick it a little bit into thinking that perhaps it's more established than it is these are a little bit shallow <laughs> not much to look at right now but hopefully in a few weeks plants take time hopefully these will fill in and have those fun flowers on them that's the idea anyways if not we tried hopefully i didn't spend too much time focusing on the sticks in this video because it's just I'm excited about them, but right now, not much to see there. I think that that's enough. Really got a bunch of stuff done this week. I'd like to do some more over here, but I'm gonna give it a couple more days just because everything over here requires some heavy lifting. I do feel fine, but just being careful. I'm gonna give it a couple more days. Loving the wall, and really just loving the cleanliness. That is something I'm really appreciating. I don't have the plants all over the ground anymore. There's more room to play with things, pull things in and out. This, the reason that this is a spot where I like to keep plants when I'm in between projects with them is because the drip line that's back here is very easily accessible. So I can have things over here for a week or two while I'm working on something else. They stay nice and hydrated. It's a matter of convenience. Oh, and it's been like 20, 25 minutes. See the sunscreen, it's it's not doing that white cast thing anymore. And yes, I know, I will hear from people about how you're supposed to wait 10 or 15 minutes before you reapply. I know, I already had some on. 
and every 60 minutes I reapply. That's what the award's for. It's good for 80, so I don't sit around and wait every time I reapply to go back in the sun if I'm doing it in that time window. Is that okay? I think it's okay. Should be. I don't know. Oh, and I've had a lot of questions and comments about the outdoor shower, which I was not expecting at all. I really thought I was going to be roasted by y'all for having this in the backyard. I've only had it for a couple weeks, so I don't have much to say about it. The questions I was getting was more about how it runs, just hooks to a hose line. I'm going to get this moved back to the edge of the patio and plumb it into a hose that's permanently connected to it, or I mean, not permanently, but while wow, it's nice enough outside to have this thing out here and running and it is solar heated. So as long as the sun's on it, there's an 11 gallon reservoir in here that warms up and does get pretty toasty. I will have to make sure that it's in a spot where it's getting enough sun to, for the water to stay warm. So I have to make sure it goes someplace where it can heat that water up easily. The sun's going to have to touch it, but uh, otherwise, not a lot to say. It has a foot wash, a handheld one, and the, the thing up there. The pressure's okay. I wouldn't consider this something for bathing, but it's good enough to get the chlorine off your skin, rinse the dirt off. I've been outside doing yard work and it's been very nifty with the dog, especially Toby. I tell Toby, I just tell him, come over. He has a seat, turn the shower on. So fast to give him a bath when I'm not messing with all the things and like trying to get him to hold still with the hose. Hi, Turbo. You trying to sneak into the shot? Need some attention. He's been so patient. Usually we do our morning swim in the morning. Yes, I said hour. He's a big part of it. He likes the swims, but I was more focused on getting some work done today and spent a good amount of the morning just doing the stretches and getting things nice and loose. Could be wrong. Maybe he's actually tired. You ready for your afternoon nap? I'm swimming. So are you. That helps make for a calm turbo in the nighttime. Anyways, hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? The heat been okay? Hopefully. I'm filming this vlog a week ahead, so everything you're seeing right now has been like 10 days in the past. I don't normally do that, but it's just the way things worked out scheduling wise with a bunch of stuff I have going on. And like I said, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.